Hi friends, welcome back. In the previous chapter, we saw the impact of cloak skew on setup and hold timing equations. And there we saw that how the cloak skew impacts the setup and hold equations as well as how the timing constraints, setup and hold timing constraints gets impacted by the cloak skew. The criteria to meet the setup and hold requirements is basically how it's affected by the clock skew. Now in this chapter, we are going to see what is the effect of clock jitter on setup and hold timing equations. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So if you would like to know what is clock jitter, I have covered this in one of our previous chapter and I will provide the link of this of that chapter in the description section of this video. So here we are just covering that what is clock jitter. So clock jitter is basically nothing but variation in the clock period of clock signal. So if you see here, the dark line is our ideal clock signal and this clock signal or the rising edges of this clock signal can shift left and right by the clock jitter timing amount. So if you see here, this is our ideal clock edge supposed to happen but this clock rising clock edge may happen between this point to this point or between this window okay so if this is our ideal rising clock edge if this happens in the left side we call it as negative clock jitter and if this happens the rising as happens in the right side we will call it as positive clock jitter okay so this is mentioned at negativity uh, jitter this time and here if you see the time period if the time period clock uh, rising edge of the clock happens after the ideal clock rising edge due to the clock jitter effect then this is called positive clock jitter time now in the more details if you see here this is our clock one which is going to the launch flip flop this is our launch flip flop and this is our capture flip flop. So you see here that this is our clock which is going to the launch flip flop and when it re reaches to the capture flip flop and it becomes the clock 2 then there might be because of the clock jitter the clock 2 may look like this signal clock 2 signal. Okay so the clock 2 rising edge ideally is supposed to happen at this point but it might happen from here to here there is a possibility that this rising edge can shift from this point to this point okay and similarly this rising edge can shift from this point to this point okay now let's see how this clock jitter affects the setup and hold timing equation as always, first we will consider there is no clock jitter and the clock is ideal or the clock 1 and clock 2 are exactly same. There is no difference in the clock 1 and clock 2. So in that case, if you remove this from minus k2 t jitter, then this is the equations we studied 2-3 chapters back where the Propagation delay clock to Q delay plus combinational logic delay should be less than clock period minus cut E setup. This is nothing but called required time, and this is what the actual arrival time of data. Correct from launch flop to the capture flip flop data pin. Now let's see how this clock jitter can affect. So, guys, remember here that if we take the worst case scenario for the setup equation. Or in other word, if we can take the worst case clock jitter scenario in the setup equation, that means we will be satisfying all other scenario in our setup equation. So if the worst setup scenario fails, then definitely the setup requirement will be failing. And if the worst case setup, setup scenario passes, that means for all other scenarios, for all other values of clock jitter in this particular case, we will be meeting our setup requirement. 
So how we decide the worst case clock jitter scenario here? Okay, so now let's see that in ideal case what happens is this is our launch edge and this is our capture edge. Correct. So here one thing is fix the propagation delay of launch flip flop flip flop to the capture flip flop that is fixed that is equal to clock to Q delay plus this combinational delay. Now everything happens with the clock path delay. So in ideal case the clock path delay or let's call it as required time. The required time what in ideal case what the required time is this time period and this clock time period minus T setup of the capture flip flop. This is our maximum, this is our minimum actually required time. Okay. So, or basically, or in other words, if we say uh, the propagation delay should be less than this required time, which is clock period minus T setup of the capture flip flop. Okay. Now, if we can reduce this required time, so we have to find the worst case scenario. So, in worst case scenario, what happens is the minimum required time what is the minimum required time for that our arrival time will still satisfy the setup equation. So if we can say that what is the minimum required time. So the minimum required time in this case what can be see this is the launch edge here and if we take this edge as the capture flip flop this is the clock too. So if we consider for the clock 2, if we consider this clock edge as the real clock edge happening in the silicon and in this here, this clock edge, okay. Then if we consider this rising edge as the clock 2 rising edge and this rising edge, the next rising edge of clock 2 as this rising edge. That means our required time, so if you see here this is the launch edge here right so everything basically ideally we consider from here but our launch our capture edge has shifted left side by t jitter correct at this point and the next during the next rising edge as well if we consider this rising edge to be shifted at left side that means our set up required time if we consider these edge this edge and here this edge that means our set up required time has decreased by 2 t jitter correct so if we consider this point at this point then this particular scenario actually becomes our worst case scenario in other words if we consider these two point for our setup calculation with the effect of clock jitter and if this scenario meets the setup requirements then there is no other scenario we can take where our setup requirement or our setup check and fail. So if this particular scenario passes our setup requirement that means we will meet our setup requirement for all other cases. So if we consider all these points what will be our new setup equation here. So if you remove remove this term then whatever remaining is nothing but our ideal setup equation. Now here as we discussed our required time our required time with the cloak jitter worst case scenario has decreased by 2t jitter. So here if we put this term minus 2t jitter in the setup equations then this is our complete setup equation with cloak jitter effect. So, if we re rearrange these equations, in that case, our clock period will be basically increasing here. Correct? Or minimum clock period which is required to meet the setup requirement is basically increasing by 2t jitter. That means, what we can conclude here is, if our clock minimum clock period is increasing, that means our maximum operating frequency will decrease. Correct? So if our frequency is decreasing that means what we will say is our performance of our design will de decrease. So clock jitter always decreases the performance. So here our arrival time is going to be the same and then hence what will be the setup required time minus arrival time 
required time here is basically going to decrease. So this is our required time. Required time basically going to this this term is nothing but required time. Required time is going to decrease by two t zeta. That means our setup slack will be decreasing, and hence our design performance will decrease. Now let's see the log zeta impact on the hold timing equation. So again here we have to consider the points of clock jitter so clock jitter means the rising edge can happen between this point to this point and this point to this point so we will consider the worst case scenario which can fail or we, which can fail our hold timing check so if that worst case scenario passes that means all other scenarios will pass the hold timing check okay so hold time what is the ideal hold time equation the hold equation is clock to q delay plus combinational delay should be greater than t hold let's consider this as zero should be greater than t hold time if we just remove this for some time so our this total propagation delay should be greater than t hold time okay so suppose this is our this is our rising edge uh, this in ideal cases we will consider hold uh, check at the same clock edge so this is our hold Okay, so this propagation delay should be greater than this T hold time. Correct. Now what we will say is what will be the worst case scenario? So in the worst case scenario, which where we have to consider the rising edge of clock 2. So if we consider the rising edge of clock 2 at this point, so in the ideal case. This was our rising edge and this is our hold requirement, T hold time of the flip flop. So this was the T hold time which should be less than the propagation delay. Clock to Q delay plus combinational delay of this logic gates. Now in the worst case scenario, if we take this rising edge at here, if we take this rising edge at this point which is the last point due to the clock jitter. So because of the clock jitter, this clock basically shifted, shifts right side and the rising edge happens here. So now if the rising edge happens here, then again we have the T hold time of the flip flop. So now this total time, this will become our jitter plus the T hold time of the flip flop. So now this will become our worst case scenario where now this propagation delay should be more than t jitter plus t hold time of the flip flop okay so this is the worst case scenario so with the clock jitter effect what will be the our hold equations our hold equations clock to q delay plus combinational delay should be greater than t hold plus 2t jitter okay now here what will be the required time this will be our required time this term will be our required time so required time here if you see our required time has increased by 2t jitter so if our required time has increased then if this is increasing then the hold slack will basically decrease correct so if the hold slack is here decreasing that means our hold meeting requirement is basically becoming more harder okay so with the clock jitter what we are going to conclude here is the clock jitter always degrades the performance it reduces the setup slack as well as it also reduces the hold slack so meeting the timing requirements setup and hold timing requirements becomes more difficult with clock jitter okay remember here we have taken the worst case scenario of the clock jitter in both setup equations and hold equation so i hope this is clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscri subscribe this channel so that you you get notified as soon as i upload the next video thank you very much